Now, now we'll have uh, Dr. Jihan Taha. Uh, Dr. Jihan um, joined the legal uh, firm uh, um, of the Marker and uh, uh, Ebrushi uh, as a scientific uh, counselor, uh, and she joined the intellectual property department uh, team um, at the beginning of uh, uh, 2019. Um, Dr. Taha um, is a PhD um, a holder from um, uh, the analytical, uh, pharmaceutical analytical chemistry from um, uh, Cairo University Faculty of Pharmacy. Uh, before uh, joining um, uh, the IND, uh, Dr. Jihan was working as an uh, assistant professor at uh, um, uh, Cairo University Faculty of Pharmacy and then um, for the regulatory affairs uh, as a general manager at uh, uh, MAP, uh, Medical Union Pharmaceuticals, for more than 20 years. Um, she achieved remarkable teaching experience in analytical chemistry and regulatory affairs um, at uh, Cairo University and uh, uh, Masr International University, uh, MIU. Um, she's um, a valuable advisory scientific uh, opinion um, uh, in the IP of pharmaceutical patent uh, disputes um, as well. Uh, we are welcoming uh, you today, uh, Professor Jihan. Um, the talk. Uh, Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Professor Nadia, you. for this nice introduction. I would like to thank the conference uh, panel for inviting me. Uh, this will be a much lighter uh, presentation uh, than the heavy <laughs> first two. Uh, I will talk about uh, pharmaceutical patents. Uh, they're, uh, how do you apply for a patent and how do you ensure patentability in case of uh, pharmaceutical patent? Um, we know, or I don't know if you know, that there are three main criteria for a patent to be accepted for an invention or uh, research to be uh, patentable. So uh, if you are doing research and you are interested uh, to have a patent to protect the invention or the structure or whatever the dosage form, uh, must enjoy three criteria. Uh, the three criteria are novelty, inventive step, and industrial application. Uh, I will talk briefly how to fulfill these criteria in a pharmaceutical patent. Let's start with the novelty. The novelty is essential uh, part of a patent or criteria for a patent. You cannot patent something that's published or known before. Uh, it shouldn't be published by any way. Uh, maybe in a journal, in a conference, in media, in TV, or even sold. Uh, this will destroy the novelty or um, prevent it from being patentable, even if this, if this revealing or this publishing was done by the inventor itself. So it's a mistake, some uh, young uh, researchers fall in, they uh, publish a journal in a journal or announce about the invention before applying for a patent. This will destroy the patent, the patency or the patent criteria. Uh, uh, actually, there are two types of novelty according to the country uh, where the patent is applied. Each uh, country applies a different uh, approach. Uh, there is absolute uh, and relative. In Egypt and most of the European countries and Asian countries, absolute novelty is applied where uh, the, the, the invention cannot be known even one day before uh, applying for the patent. But uh, USA, uh, they adopt another system which is called the relative novelty, where there is a grace, grace period. Uh, in, uh, it's, it can be up to one year. If it was revealed by, of course, the inventor itself, not uh, something uh, revealed by another inventor, but there is a grace period. Uh, but this is uh, not adopted here in Egypt. Uh, so the researcher must do homework before starting uh, by finding if the invention is known before by any of the means. And we are lucky these days to have all these inline uh, services that's well known to uh, the chemistry research and must make the most use of it. Uh, previously, people had to send the like postage and get things which were much slower. Now, but in the comfort of your home, in front of your computer, you can search in SciFinder, Chemical Abstract, United States Patent Office. Uh, the WIPO patent scope is a very useful uh, tool. And uh, WIPO is a, a world uh, uh, intellectual property organization. And they provide a lot of free courses for people how to make 
the most of the WIPO patent scope uh, website, which uh, not only publish uh, the accepted patents, also applications. They are still under uh, examination. Uh, how about the inventive step? Inventive step is, uh, li it looks like uh, a vague expression. Uh, at, uh, the Americans call it non-obviousness. So uh, the invention shouldn't be obvious to a person who's skilled in this field, the field of the invention. It shouldn't be like a normal extrapolation, uh, um, thing, something that anyone skilled can predict. It should, uh, we can give it other word which might look more uh, simple to understand. Uh, your invention should give unexpected advantageous effect. Unexpected, something really, uh, let's uh, talk about um, some example. Okay, if you're having uh, some synthetic molecule, it's an organic chemistry, medicinal chemistry uh, invention, uh, the novel molecule, even uh, if um, there was an applying a novel scaffold, uh, it based on prior uh, structure activity relationship, uh, also computer aided drug design, still it has to give a significant higher activity uh, for the target disease when compared with what? With the lead compounds in the same uh, category. Uh, what about, for example, dosage forms? Uh, if uh, there is a new dosage form, it shouldn't be like a me too repetition of an older dosage form. For example, uh, if I want to apply beta cyclodextrin to NSAID, uh, this is old news. Even if one of the NSAIDs was skipped by the former inventors, uh, it, it could be predicted by anyone who is in pharmaceutics field and would uh, suggest such an invention. Again, it should give unexpected advantageous effect and should solve certain problem in an innovative way that no one thought about it before uh, this uh, invention. Uh, industrial applicability, um, uh, invention must have industrial applicability. We patents are not for just abstract knowledge. Uh, so uh, sometimes this might be problematic in chemistry and biosciences in the absence of concrete experimentation because sometimes upscaling and things like this don't work in manufacturing process like they work on the bench. But uh, the patent claim should contain, as a minimum, a technically viable solution and not just uh, unresolved problem or just speculative uh, uh, of the intended result. How to apply for a patent? Uh, if you are applying for an Egyptian patent, uh, so you are here in Egypt and you want uh, uh, to acquire an Egyptian patent, you have to know certain facts that granting and enforcement of the patents in Egypt are governed by the local Egyptian national law. But this law is in harmony with the international treaties that Egypt uh, signed, like the TRIPS. Um, another fact that I, I see that some of the young researchers don't know, that patent protection is local, local. So if you get an Egyptian patent, it's, uh, it gives you protection only in Egypt. If you get a German patent, it gives you protection only in Germany, etc. It's local, so patent protection is local. There is nothing like an international patent that gives you protection worldwide. There is nothing like that. There is international application. I'll talk about it in a second. Uh, and when you want to apply for an Egyptian patent, you will head to the Egyptian uh, patent office in Kasraini Street. Uh, so the first step, what is the first step? The first you, you prepare a patent application. This sounds simple, but it's not that simple because writing a correct patent application uh, will increase the chance of the patent being accepted. Starting from the title of the invention. Sometimes the examiner will ask you to change the title if it is not indicative enough of the invention. Uh, also there is abstract, uh, also background and detailed description. Uh, the background and detailed description should contain the prior art, the problems and shortcomings in the previous art, and you should write in a very well manner what, uh, what is this, this invention about, what's novel about it, what's inventive, what do you mean? And uh, it should reveal also the best, best pathways to get the results. So uh, wide ranges, vague language are not accepted, and the examiner might might, um, might ask you to rewrite 
uh, some of the sentences that don't look accurate or not uh, clear. Uh, also, of course, you can add any visual materials, drawings, plans, etc., to uh, prove your point of the pattern. Then the cherry of the cake, the claims. The claims are very important. You cannot write a patent without at least one claim. Uh, claims define what we call the scope of protection. What do you want to protect? What do you want to protect with this patent? And they should be very cleverly written. Uh, actually, it takes years from uh, patent agents and patent attorneys to be able to write uh, 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 viable and correct and um, uh, good claims that gives you the correct scope of protection. Here is um, an example of a patent uh, in the United States Patent uh, Office. As you see, here is a title, the references, and the abstract. And if it is about a synthetic molecule, it will most probably contain what we call a Marcoche structure, where uh, not all the um, groups, so they are represented by letters which are decoded. Uh, this is a patent of uh, Vitracvi, which is an anti-cancer drug. Here's a larger view of the same patent. Uh, I wanted to focus on, on dates. Uh, there are two dates here. Uh, item 22, it's, this is a very important date. This is a priority date. This is the date where the patent was first uh, applied, uh, submitted. And this is where uh, the 20 years of protection are calculated. Uh, you will notice the date of the patent on top uh, to the right, there is four years, about four years gap. Uh, this is the time it took to examine this patent. So the priority date is not the publishing or the acceptance date, the priority date is when uh, the inventor uh, submitted uh, the patent. So the priority date is very important. Uh, this one is, uh, was submitted by PCT, which I'll explain now. Um, and here, um, my talk about claims. For example, this same patent has 30 claims, 30. One of them, claim 29, alone has 105 structural variation to the formula. So uh, these people covered, and they have a very uh, perfect, uh, excellent scope of protection, uh, preventing any other inventor to make use of their work, and uh, blocking the way for them. How to apply for uh, several countries? Uh, I told you there is no international patent, but there is an international patent application. Uh, what we uh, call the PCT, Patent Application, Patent Cooperation Treaty. Uh, this is a system where you can, with one application, consolidate the application in one step, one, one application. But you still have to deal with each country's patent office one by one later on. So, uh, what is the benefit for me if I want to apply, uh, why would I choose the PCT uh, application? Uh, this um, diagram might uh, show uh, the benefit. Uh, if you are applying in the um, uh, classic method, the classic old method, it's called the Paris method, you will notice the time uh, plan, maybe just by one look you will see that the PCT gives you much more time. Uh, let me explain this. Uh, when you are applying, uh, for example, for Egyptian patent, uh, uh, the time zero is your priority date that I talked about. This is where you get 20 years of protection. Then you have 12 months, 12 months grace period. What is this grace period for? To apply in other countries if you want. I am talking about someone who wants to have patent in different countries. So within the 12 months, he can apply or she can apply to the other uh, patent office. They have to have different applications. So uh, for example, I want to have a patent in Egypt, Germany, and uh, United States. So I'll have to communicate with the United States patent, patent office and make another application. Then uh, in Germany, I will see what is their application form and apply within 12 months. Then I will deal with each country separately. But PCT, uh, the, different, uh, the difference is you have one application, one application, okay? And then you have 30 months uh, to uh, start dealing with the other countries. But you have more advantages than this, the time. 
you will get something that's called the International Search Report. This is very important, very useful. It is uh, a screening, a screening report. This is not um, a report that means that it's, uh, the patent is already accepted or refused. It's just an examiner screening of your patent to give you an idea if you should continue or discontinue if it has a major uh, problem or you can adjust your patent. You have some um, uh, possibility of adjusting the patent writing, but it, it's kind of limited. But still, if you find a problem, that might be corrected. Also, what of the benefits? You'll get international publication. Uh, all these steps are controlled by WIPO, so the, they will uh, publish the application in the uh, WIPO patent scope, uh, uh, patent scope website. Uh, also, you can have uh, some additional uh, reports. They are optional. They cost money. Uh, but why would an inventor want to have any of these optional uh, optional reports because sometimes there is a gap between the time that you applied and the time it takes to translate some of the foreign patents for example in Korea and China so maybe after this time something appears that will destroy the novelty of your uh, invention then the inventor would not be interested to continue because this costs money so uh, within the 30 months you'll start communicating with the countries intended and so, as you see, you have 30 months, which is a big advantage compared to the 12 months of the, the classic way of uh, ap applying. Um, uh, I want to tell you, if you apply in a local way uh, and you start thinking, maybe I wanted uh, to have an PCT, you can, within 12 months, transform your local application to PCT. So this is possible, maybe after you already, but you'll get the priority date, the day zero that you applied to the Egyptian uh, patent office. So maybe after you applied in a normal way and you think, oh, I might have advantage if I apply to other countries, then within the first 12 months, you can still transform your uh, patent application to PCT application. Um, the, the, the search report is uh, issued by what we call International Search Authority. And in Africa, Egypt is the only country with the uh, International Search Authority. Uh, these are the 24 search authorities. 24, yes. Um, so most probably, if you apply or submit an application, PCT application in Egypt, you will be examined by the uh, e Egyptian examiner team at the patent office and the most of them uh, are pharmacists, but they are very uh, capable and well-trained. Uh, this is uh, a, a brief, uh, just two clips of one of the international search reports. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, the examiner will put, like in this table, it would, will put, he will put or she will put list of the um, uh, papers or journals or references she think is relevant to this invention, and then there is a code, the code is a category and here is the key of the code. So if you get X, this means that the examiner thinks that the patent is not novel. If you get Y, he thinks it's uh, not, uh, it doesn't have an inventive step. Uh, also there is a detailed uh, uh, examination of each of the claims. For example, this clip uh, to the right, you will see that the examiner thinks that uh, claims nine to 20 are novel but uh, one to seven are not novel. Uh, also, uh, the, uh, the inventive step and uh, the industrial applicability, so the claims are examined one by one. As I told you, it's one of the most important parts of the, the, the most, most important part of the, of the patent. Uh, so the, the researcher must make use of this, uh, this report and must uh, know how to interpret this. It's full of codes and uh, abbreviations, so it must be uh, very well studied and uh, know how to adjust a patent and know the limitation of adjusting a patent because you cannot totally change it. There is also a frame and the limitation for the change. Uh, this was a really um, brief, brief, brief introduction to patents. If anyone wants to ask anything, uh, this is my email. You are welcome uh, to communicate with me. Uh, and thank you for being good listeners, and thank you very much.